Hello everyone. Welcome to Tales of Mahabharat by Ban and Crazy Stories. In the last episode we saw that Sage Vyasa and Lord Ganesha worked together to present the Mahabharata to the world. We are introduced to King Shantanu of the Kuru dynasty and his able son Bhishma. King Shantanu marries Satyavati owing to his son's great sacrifice and oath. Now on to the next episode. King Shantanu and Satyavati were blessed with two sons, Chitrangada and Vichitravirya. They lived happily for many years, but their happiness was cut short. Prince Chitrangada suddenly passed away on the battlefield in the absence of Bhishma, just months before his coronation. Bhishma felt broken and dejected at the death of his step brother. King Shantanu, unable to bear this loss, passed away. Prince Vichitravirya was crowned the king. For the very first time in history, a younger brother was made king in spite of the presence of a qualified older brother. But Bhishma dutifully carried out all the responsibilities of the kingdom in the name of the king. On the other hand, in the kingdom of Kashi, the king decided to hold a swayamvar, a grand ceremony for his beautiful daughters to choose their future husbands. To Bhishma's surprise, King Vichitravirya was not invited for the ceremony but in the past the two kingdoms shared a good relationship in fact they had built a bond through marriage without swayamvar what could the reason be for ignoring our kingdom thought bhishma investigating into the matter bhishma found out that vichitravirya being the son of satyavati a woman from the fisherman clan was deemed unworthy for the invitation bhishma enraged decided to take the matter in his own hands and meet the kashi king kashi was decorated from tip to toe in grandeur the kings and princes from kingdoms far and wide received a splendid welcome in kashi the palace was buzzing with excitement and the kings awaited to be chosen by the princesses amba the eldest princess was about to choose king shalva the man who was ruling her heart for a very long time but the screeching of the chariot jolted one and all the whole court was astonished and the kashi king was lost for words but soon the kings from the various parts of the land laughing jeered at bhishma aren't you a bit old for the princesses a life long oath to remain unmarried all a lie someone taunted it is too late now even your grace can't hide your age anymore bhishma bhishma smirking and undeterred took the three princesses into the chariot he announced that the three princesses were for his brother the king of the kuru dynasty he challenged anyone to stop him king shalva and the other kings tried their best to stop bhishma but no one could match his might bhishma with the three kashi princesses in tow head to hastinapur the three princesses received a roaring welcome in hastinapur queen satyavati Happy on meeting the princesses gave orders for the wedding preparation to begin everyone was in a mood to rejoice except the eldest kashi princess amba she in sadness announced that she was in love with king shalva and wanted to choose him bhishma cutting her off in the middle said why didn't you say this then no wonder king shalva fought so much for you you must go to him amba with respect was sent to king shalva She was expecting a warm welcome from her beloved but was heartbroken to hear his rejection. King Shalva said he could not think of taking her back and that she should return to Bhishma who won her hand and might accept her. Embarrassed and dejected, Amba returned to Hastinapur. She narrated all that happened to Bhishma and fell at his feet hoping to be married to him. Maybe I should accept her, thought Bhishma, but instead backed away saying I can't marry you. You are too young and besides, I have taken an oath to remain unmarried. I would have to choose death than break my oath by marrying you. He asserted that her silence in Kashi has brought about this misfortune, but pitying her, he advised her to return to King Shalva. I saw disgust in his eyes. Besides, you are the bravest and the most intelligent man of our times. 
but it seems like not brave enough to break an oath to save a woman who is put in this predicament because of your actions nor are you smart enough to think of the repercussions before you act bhishma ashamed and guilty he said beholding my oath is the most important thing to me all i can offer you is an apology so please accept my apologies and forgive me he even offered her a comfortable life in hastinapur one day she decided to go to the jungles to find a sage a sage who would bring justice to her and teach a lesson to bhishma after traveling into the jungle for days amba met the sage hotravahana who was once the king of kashi and her grandfather he listened keenly to her story and felt bad for the princess he said only one sage has a power to influence bhishma's decisions and it is your luck that that very sage will soon visit us a few days later the hermitage was buzzing with excitement preparations were on to welcome the guest one afternoon a man with a radiant face was welcomed with favor sage hotravahana introduced amba to the sage bhargava he is the only one who can find you a solution amba said sage hotravahana bhargava when blessing amba realized she was in deep suffering and asked hotravahana to narrate her story bhargava felt pity for amba after listening to her story he comforted amba and said he would make bhishma marry her and that bhishma would never disobey him bhishma on receiving the summons by his revered teacher promptly came to meet sage bhargava he falls in his feet and soon realizes the reason for being called on seeing amba he asserts that he cannot break his oath bhargava explains to him that breaking an oath for the teacher is not a sin also emphasizing that they could be happy with each other bhishma politely refusing said the vo is the most important thing to me i would happily give my life but not break the vo i should curse you for disobeying my orders but i do understand your point but as a punishment you must fight me bhishma accepted the invitation with humility they headed towards an open space away from the hermitage to fight for battle sage bhargava without a moment to waste sent out his first astra bhishma being a student was equally swift and dodged it the battle went on for a whole day drawing awe even from gods amba too watched on with bated breath from behind of sacred fig tree both matched one another until bhishma drew his prasvapastra a weapon which renders the opponent unconscious but just then sesh narada stopped them before they destroyed the world with their powers bhishma obediently fell at the sage bhargava's feet dropping his bow and arrow sage bhargava none other than lord parshurama beaming with pride hugged bhishma on the other hand amba angry feeling cheated and burning in the fire of revenge went into the middle of the forest she now sat in penance to invoke lord kartikeya one day happy with amba's dedication lord kartikeya manifested with the magical non drying lotus garland from heaven he granted her what she had desired and said the one wearing this garland will be able to kill bhishma handing over the garland to amba amba jubilant and waiting to see bhishma's end traveled far and wide to find a king who would accept the garland and kill bhishma but no one accepted the herculean task amba reached the kingdom of panchal to meet king drupada but he too declined to fight as bhishma was known for being just amba frustrated threw the garland away which then gets hooked on a pillar none in the kingdom ever dared to touch the garland in fact every evening a lamp was lit in its name the garland retained its freshness and fragrance even after months amba was unable to find a solution having climbed five mountains and surpassing every challenge thrown at her she reached the gates of heaven kailash in a cave she sat in penance of lord shiva He is the only one who could help me destroy Bhishma thought Amba happy with her dedication Lord Shiva manifested and granted her one boon who will kill Bhishma asked Amba Shiva suggests you will do it 
Amba perplexed asks, How could I kill him? I am no match for his skills. Not in this birth, but in next one. A short shiver. Amba humble but disappointed said, What's the point of revenge when one doesn't even remember the reason for it? Shiva assured her that she would remember everything. He also said she would be reborn in the very place the weapon to kill him was left. Amba satisfied taking the Lord's name, embraced death. Far away, King Vichitravirya was engrossed with poetry and music, enjoying his lives with his wives, enjoying all the pleasure the kingdom had to offer without any responsibilities. On the other hand, Bhishma was in charge of the kingdom. The subjects of the kingdom were content and relieved to have Bhishma in charge. Unfortunately, the happiness did not last long. The king suddenly succumbed to an illness and passed away. Losing both her sons at young age, Satyavati was inconsolable. The kingdom also grieved as they did not have a prince. Satyavati blamed herself and her father. If my father out of greed had not made Bhishma take that oath, we wouldn't be facing this crisis, said Satyavati, miserable and sad. One morning, Satyavati advised Bhishma, Ambika and Ambalika are still young. You two are eligible to be married. Following the rules of Somdev, you could marry them and save the kingdom. Bhishma was lost in thought, thinking of his life up until now. He was reminded of his childhood, his conversations with his mother about becoming a king and his efforts to achieve that goal. His father waiting day and night to see him as king. He also remembered denying Amba to withhold his woe. How could he break his woe now? My oath means more to me than my life. Truths and untruths could become one. The difference between right and wrong could be skewed. The sun could lose its warmth or the moon its chill. But I will never break my woe. We need to find another solution as this is impossible, said Bhishma empathetically and walked away. Namaste friends, hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Tales of Mahabharat by Banning Tree Stories. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel.